Are you looking to grow revenues, increase profitability, or obtain financing? If so, you came to the right place. Running a business is all about leadership. How do you become a better leader? Learn from the successful entrepreneurs and business owners how to lead your organization more effectively. That's why we created Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business, to help you succeed with your host, Andrew Frazier, Business Growth Pro and CFO and founder of the Small Business Pro University. Every Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern, we're joined by experienced entrepreneurs and business owners who share their secrets to success via live stream. Also, every Friday morning, we release a new podcast episode. Either way, you will learn about developing your business leadership skills from our roster of highly performing guest experts. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com. Good evening. Welcome again to Leadership Live at 805. I'm your host, Andrew Frazier, and excited to be back on Tuesday evening. Um, You know, each Tuesday, if you're joining us for the first time, we have a great guest, and we really just talk about key topics and themes that it's important for entrepreneurs and small business owners to know about. So um, we're in for a great evening. I'm excited about our topic. I'm excited about our guest. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to get started. Um, you know, definitely, you know, a lot of things are going on these days. And, you know, the environment's a little bit uncertain. But we're going to be talking about some things that are going to help you regardless of the economic environment. Um, to be more successful in business. Uh, My guest today is Byron Wolf, and we're going to focus on profit and where the growth is because, you know, if you're not growing, you're dying, and um, business is all about making money. So definitely we want to know where the profit is. So that's what Byron's going to tell us today. So, hey, Byron, how are you doing this evening? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on the show here on a Tuesday night at 8.05. I love it. Let's go. Okay. Excellent. So, no, I'm excited about um, really chatting with you this evening. Um, we, we, had, we had a great talk previously, and you're, you're doing some great stuff. And um, I thought you had some great things to be able to share with the audience. So definitely um, looking forward to um, continuing our conversation. So definitely a good evening to everyone. Everybody who's on, definitely feel free to comment, ask questions in the chat, and you know we'll just make this informal and fun. So, um, Byron, you you know you're doing a lot of stuff. Um, you know you're a CFO. You're doing different businesses. Um, why don't you take a minute, just talk a little bit about your journey and you know how you got to where you are now? Yeah, no, I love it. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to do that. So my uh, my journey uh, started like a lot of people's didn't really know what I wanted to do, <laughs> you know. So uh, you know, college was was an option for me. Uh, so went to uh, went to college. Uh, tried to walk on to the uh, the football team at University of Tennessee Knoxville. Uh, found out that I was not as fast nor as big. Uh, nor as strong uh, as I thought I was uh, and, and didn't make the team, but that was okay. I uh, watched some amazing Tennessee football uh, for those years. Uh, but then, you know, found out that uh, business was really where I wanted to be. Um, I make a really poor employee. Uh, I tend to focus on fixing things and trying to find new ways of, of, of doing things. Uh, and so because of that, you know, I knew small business was kind of where I needed to land. Um, the the first small business that I ever had uh, came about kind of by accident, and it was much earlier than than college, so I didn't even know it was small business at the time. But I uh, I started doing some lawn care. Uh, found out that was a lot of work, and that the other kids in my neighborhood that I that I was friends with would would love to mow the grass and get paid to do that, and so I would get them to mow. Uh, using their parents, uh, lawnmowers and weed eaters. So all the parents out there, sorry. Uh, But I would use their, uh, they would use their gas, their parents' equipment, they would mow. 
I would collect the money, then I would just hold five dollars back of the yard for myself. Uh, so I kind of got into the small business uh, in that in that realm. Didn't know a small business at the time. This was you know very young, uh, but I knew that 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 worked well for me. I enjoyed that process. It's a very cool thing to do. Uh, got into college. Was was doing well in college, but I was making great money bartending. So of course, you know, making good money bartending, I said, "Hey, I wonder if I can make more money with this." And so I started teaching other people to uh, to bartend. Uh, so that was another small business, again, not properly formed. So uh, I didn't have the LLC. I didn't really know what I was doing. Me and another buddy said, "Hey, we're going to teach people to bartend. We're going to help them get jobs. We're going to charge people to do this." So uh, it's great time. Enjoyed doing it. Had a blast. I uh, found out partnerships are, are, are much more difficult than you ever imagined. Uh, I ended up breaking that partnership uh, with that individual. Um, you know, it was just a bad situation. He had expectations. I had expectations. We didn't clearly define those in the beginning. So it became a bad partnership uh, at the point where we we're making great money, but we both had different expectations of what that would look like. So because of that uh, poor planning, uh, that one ended up ending. So moving forward, you know, continued through college and uh, I had, you know, a few jobs. But again, I was constantly looking for the next best way to do it. Constantly kind of feeling like ah, I should probably be in charge regardless of where I was hired in at. Uh, so started some small businesses, started some dealerships, started some other things. Found out I really loved being in small business. And so as that progressed, I found that the financial oversight and really understanding the numbers and like knowing what those are was really where like I shine. And so based off of that, we uh, started a dealership, did, did pretty well with that. That was kind of an accident too. I can get into that. It's a big story. I'll tell that one later. But I uh, found out that, that did well. We had an exit from that. That was, was a great exit. But you know, now in hindsight being 2020, I know I should have definitely had a bigger multiplier. Uh, but made a good exit, had some good money set aside, started consulting. Uh, and that kind of led into where I'm at now, where I do the fractional CFO. So I'm a CPA. So uh, I, I don't file taxes, but I do tax plans. You don't want your, your tax plan guy to be your filing guy, because if you get audited, they're coming after the CPA. So I, I stay on this side, the tax plan side. Uh, and I do the uh, fractional CFO services for a bunch of small businesses, you know, in that 45 million and under range. I uh, help them to get clarity in their finances, clarity in their books, clarity in the direction of where they want to go, help them to focus on the profitability uh, of that company. So that's the main focus that I do. You know, I do some, uh, some M&A, uh, you know, work as well. I help people to, to make the separations of partnerships, help them with the mergers uh, that, that need to occur there. Uh, acquiring businesses, help you in the growth there. But all that stuff is really centered around the high level CFO services that we do. So, you know, in, in a in an ease of explaining it, we're a fractional CFO. We're the we're the CFO that you can afford uh, in a part time basis, uh, you know, to help you make it to the level where you can hire somebody on full time that's going to fill that role for you. Uh, but it's been a blast. I love it. I love the clients that I have. I love the work that I do. I can't imagine doing anything else. It's just been a, a fantastic ride. Uh, and I and, and I love everything about it. And so I just really enjoy what I do. Excellent. Excellent. So, no, I, I, I loved your your explanation and, you know, definitely a lot of lessons just in what you were saying here, um, even beyond the topic. But I, I do want to highlight a couple of things because because we have a lot of similarities. And, and um, you know, actually, I don't know if I told you my my first business was a paper route. Um, oh, yeah. Seven days a week, Pittsburgh yeah. Press for five years with my brother, starting in fourth grade. And uh, since we knew everybody, um, we started a snow shoveling business and would hire our friends to shovel the snow. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> love we, it. We, we, we did all right. That, you know, got that early entrepreneurial start is, is always nice. I went away from it, but came back and, you know, on the financial side. So, uh, but I think everybody who's done a partnership has run into issues with partnerships. Oh, so right. it, was, it was good that you mentioned that because I, I, I have uh, run into that the same. So, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, I'll get a partner. It'll be great. Um, many times, sometimes it is great, but many times it's not, but there's a lot of lessons learned. So you want to talk a little bit more about the, the lesson learned or what you would do differently um, 
Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I, I have found, and you're right, sometimes they do work out really well, sometimes not so great. Uh, I tell you the the I wouldn't say it's a thousand percent, but it I would I would uh, you know argue it's probably 90, 95 percent of the partnerships that work out are because they take the time in the beginning to set the precedence, to like set the expectation of where they're gonna go, what they're gonna do what the separation of duties are. And so my, you know, and, I, and I'll call it a failure. And I'm sure if you talk to the guy that I had the bartending school with, he'll tell you it was all my fault. I can tell you it's all his fault. The reality is we just had different expectations. And so, you know, he he was out building business. Um, you know, according to him, what I saw was him just going out and partying every night, trying to find new bars and places to pick up clients. Uh, so to me, that was like, well, you're just out having fun. I'm over here doing all the work. But to him, he feels like he was doing all the work, having to stay up late you know, and, and interact with these people to build a business. So I get that 100%. But we didn't set that expectation in the beginning. So the partnerships that I've seen that have done really, really well are the ones where people are friends or they're, you know, they get along well, but they know on the front end that if they set the expectation, they build the lanes that they're going to stay in and they know what their frame of reference is for the business, that they're going to find success in that. And so the I have partnerships now. I have some amazing, amazing partners and in, in multiple businesses. Uh, but every one of those has a very clear cut operating agreement uh, and a uh, kind of an understanding of where it needs to be. To the point where I even have in my operating agreements, it says, hey, these are the expectations of, of what you're going to do. And then we have an addendum on myself as well that says, if you can't perform these functions, that we will essentially sell your equity or take a piece of your ownership away to finance like performing in that arena. Uh, and the reason that we do that is because you have to have an answer for that. If you just say, hey, I really need you to do X, I'm going to do Y, everything's going to be amazing. Well, if they stop doing X, you know, you've got some written that says, hey, you're supposed to do X. Well, what's what, you know, what's the where's the the stick, right? You've got the carrot. Hey, we make a bunch of money if you do it, but you don't have any results if they don't. So I like to have that in my operating agreements that says, hey, if you're not going to perform, we're going to pay somebody to do it. And you're paying for that. Like it's coming out of your equity. Uh, so I would highly suggest that having a good operating agreement in place, having that understanding, it's not going to solve all of your problems. But like when when the operating agreement, you know, doesn't have that last little bit, that's where the trust steps in. You know, and, and obviously you trust your partner, you wouldn't have gone in business with them. But having full trust can get a little convoluted because there's there's too much out there that needs to be interpreted. But when it's just maybe that last 5%, that last little bit to go, you can get together. Hey, this is my expectations. This is yours. Let's find a middle ground. Let's make it happen and let's move forward. Uh, so that, that, that partnership agreement, the operating agreement, that's everything. If you have one of those, like take the time on the front end to make sure that it's rock solid moving into that. You both agree to it. And I promise you that partnership is, is going to be so much better uh, and you're going to increase your chance of success. I, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't be, uh, yeah, I wouldn't be shocked to find out it's a 20 X chance of, of being successful versus not having one. Like, you know, I, and I don't have any basis of that. That's completely pulled out of the back of my head. Uh, but I mean, I, you know, that would, that would not shock me if that was the number. Uh, it just, it's so much more successful when you do that. Yeah, no, I, I would agree. Um, putting in the work up front, use attorneys. Yes. Um, get separate attorneys <laughs> you know you, um, just um, it's better to take do it early on so I, I would wholeheartedly agree because um, everybody has their own perspective looks at th things dif different ways and you know it's important to you know have something written um, as an agreement because you know people only remember like 30% of what you tell them so if you guys are like, oh, cool, we'll do this, you know, you don't have the same understanding as they do, and you're already off to a, a difficult start. So, no, that's great. I appreciate you sharing. I just figured we should take a sec for that because uh, a lot of people run into that or will may run into that, and hopefully this will give them some guidance and some make them think before they move too fast. So. So that's cool. So before we go too far into it, um, you know, I do the show through the Small Business Pro University. So uh, for those of you who are new to it, I'm just going to play a one minute video. I'll be back with Brian 
right after that. And we'll be talking small business. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Do you own your business or does it own you? Is your business growing and are you making enough oh. money? As a business owner, there are so many things you need to know to become more successful. Hello, my name is Andrew Frazier, the business growth pro and CFO. I created the Small Business Pro University for you. Small Business Pro University has self-paced, dynamic, multimedia learning experiences created by more than 20 instructors who are business owners just like you. Small Business Pro University will empower you to become a masterpreneur by learning the secrets to creating a successful enterprise to go from working in your business to working on your business. Take advantage of our strategic a coaching program or just simply choose the courses that you need at www.sbprou.com we will empower you to thrive and not just survive and make more money in any business environment okay good evening back here with byron talking small business and really focus on growth you know definitely um you know if you're not growing you know, you're dying in business. Unfortunately, most small businesses have low or no growth. So um, important topic. Um, so when you're working with people um, and when you're thinking about uh, how to help people grow, what would you say are some of the key things that are hindering people from growing? Oh, that's a great question. So I think that we tend to focus too broad. You know, we think like there's so many factors, there's so many things that I need to look at and I need to manage all of these if I'm going to be successful. Uh, and I think that, that that's probably not accurate. I don't want to say it's not accurate. There's, you know, some business can be very complicated, but all businesses essentially break down into what I call the three main components. And so I think that uh, it's, it's revenue at the top, right? So this is going to be your sales, this is your marketing, getting the, getting the people in the door, getting the dollars in the door, right? So revenue is huge. Then there's profit, you know, so that's your bottom line. Like if your revenue is good, you got to manage everything that comes after that. Those are all your expenses, fixed, variable, you know, the, the things that affect the sale, the things you have to have, your fixed overhead, like your rent, you know, keeping the lights on, things of that nature. So those are the things you need to manage to make sure your profitability is really good. And then there's cash flow. And so the thing that I know more often than not, that's the thing that people forget about or they don't manage or they don't understand or they overlook. Uh, cash flow is, is everything. Cash flow is king. If you don't have good cash flow, you can't operate that business. I don't care how much money you got coming in the door. If you can't afford to cover payroll, those doors aren't going to stay open. So cash flow is everything. You have to watch cash flow. So revenue, crazy important. I agree. You got to have money coming in the door. If you're not making a profit, what are you doing? So I think profit's very, very important. I, you know, I would say profit over revenue because I would much rather take a bunch of money home than make a bunch of money that goes out to other people and I don't have anything left at the end of the day. But cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. If your cash flow isn't under control, if you don't have a management over your cash flow, you're not going to be able to operate. You're not going to be able to make decisions for your company that are best for the company. So here's a great example. I've, I've dealt with this multiple times. So if you're a small business and you hear this and you're like, oh man, that's me. No, I'm picking on a ton of people. This isn't just you. But I've had multiple clients that I've spoken with and they say, you know, cash flow. Yeah, I just whatever's in the bank. I know that that's what I can spend. I get that. You know, I mean, I've, you know, I've been there. I've looked at the bank and been like, oh, man, like, what can we afford this week? You know, like, oh, man, marketing. I don't know. We don't really have cash for that. So, you know, managing that cash flow means managing what's coming in, what's going out. Like, it can't just be looking at your bank account and saying, oh, we got money today. Like, looks like we're going to cover payroll. Oh, man, we got money today. Maybe we should invest in this or invest in that. So if you if you have good cash flow, instead of making decisions based off the available cash that you have in the system at that exact moment, or saying, ah, man, I hope we have enough money for payroll. You're managing that in the way that you can invest in things that make sense for the business. So if you have two options and both of those options are going to cost the same amount of money, you want to have the one that has the highest return. That's an easy answer. That's an easy decision. If you have two things that cost different amounts of money, 
but one of them has a much higher rate of return. So meaning the return that you have, that percentage is significantly higher on this one than it is on this other one. But this one's maybe a lot more expensive and like your cash flow is not under control. And even though maybe your ROI is 30, 40% on this one, you're like, man, that's amazing. I can't, I can't afford this because I don't have the cash flow for it. So I'm going to take this one over here that's a 10% and then that's going to help me to get to the point where maybe I can make this decision later on. I don't want you to be in that spot. I want you to make sure that you're taken care of so that this big one, the big expense one that has the big ROI, I want that to be an option for your business. I want you to be able to make that decision and say, I want the big return. I want to make the most money for my business. I don't want to be handcuffed to the cash that's in my bank account. So managing your cash flow, that's building your business credit. That's managing the, the loans, the, the credit lines that you have out there. That's managing your receivables. If you have a great, great customer, or you think it's a great, great customer, but that customer consistently takes 90, 120, 150 days to pay you, and all the rest of your clients are paying you within 30 days, that customer might not be so great because it's costing you a lot of money for them to slow pay you like that. And so the customer that you're able to turn that over, maybe you've got two or three customers that are paying you within two or three weeks, but maybe the rate of return isn't as good as the guy that's waiting six months to pay you. But if you got to wait six months for that, how many decisions did you miss out on because you didn't have that money in your business? You have to pay attention to these things. So this is, this is cash flow management. It's not just how much money I got in my bank, bank account, it's managing the cash that you have, managing the cash that's coming into your business and managing the cash that's going out. And so again, check your credit, check your loans. Don't wait until you need a loan to get a loan. Get that, get that business credit built up. Get that line of credit in place so that when you need it, you have it. Banks don't want to loan you money when you need it. They want to loan it to you when you don't need it. So I know that doesn't make any sense whatsoever, but that's the reality of the banking world. Like, and I know Andrew knows that. Like, this is part of, of managing that, that cash, managing the, the finances that you have. And so pay attention to your revenue. That's the money that's coming in. You got to have revenue to build profit. But if you're only focused on building your revenue and you're ignoring your profit, you can be growing something that you're losing money. And every time you 2x, 3x, 4x that revenue, if you're losing money, you're also 2x, 3x, 4xing that loss. So that's that much more money you're losing out on. So we need to pay attention to these. Okay. No, I mean, definitely great. Um, you know, I think you, you covered some really important stuff. So I'm going to circle back on it um, and simplify because, you know, this stuff is like second nature to us. But, uh, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, they, have, they may have a fear of numbers um, or analysis, but there's certain things you can only understand about your business by through analysis and through the numbers. And if you're ever going to grow, you have to be able to run your business by the numbers. So you've got to get help. You've got to learn. But a couple relationships, you know, when you do something in your business, it's going to affect other things. So having an appreciation, okay, I do this, what other things does it impact in my business is important. And, you know, one of the big things is cash flow is not profit and profit is not cash flow. Great. So you can be making money and run out of cash or you could be losing money and have plenty of cash. So you got to manage both sides of the equation. Um, so, you know, definitely, I think that's one of the nuances, one of the things you had talked about, but I just wanted to, you know, share a little more around that because, you know, that's something that people, um, need to take away. Um, and, and then you also talked a little bit, you know, about revenue, profit, you prefer profit growth to revenue growth. Um, oh, yeah. So, um, so what are some ways to um, improve profit? So when you go work with someone, you talk with someone, you know, how do you help them improve profit? What are some of the things, some of the strategies, or what are some of the things to look at um, within the business to figure out how they can potentially be more profitable with what they're doing? 
Yeah, that's a great question. And so profitability really comes down to, you know, maximizing the results of the expenses that you have and minimizing the cost of those expenses on the things that you have to do. So if you are a labor intensive business, you have to have labor. It's not something you can eliminate. You know, if somebody said, oh, hey, you just need to get all your payroll down. Well, that may cost you revenue. And that may be a small piece of how you make the money. So if, if reducing your, your payroll by 10% results in a 10% decrease in your revenue, well, that's a massive impact to your business because that 10% of your payroll, that may be only be 30% of your revenue. So reducing that by 10% and then reducing your revenue by 10% is going to have a 3x effect. So you're going to have a much bigger impact on that. So you need to be able to reduce your expenses while keeping revenue the same, or it needs to have the effect when you reduce those expenses that it doesn't have the same effect on your revenue. So some examples to that is going to be paying attention to your payroll, paying attention to how that works. A lot of people think, well, if I can get rid of this guy, bring in this other guy that's cheaper, that that's going to be a good situation. Not necessarily, because there's a lot of cost that goes into training somebody uh, to be at the level that they're at. And so make sure that you're coaching your people, helping them to be better, because if they're better, they should be producing more revenue for your business. And so it's not just a simple fact of reducing those expenses. It's increasing the effectiveness of those expenses is a big piece of that. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how effective our employees are, how effective these expenses are in creating the revenue piece that's there. Can we reduce these expenses without having an adverse effect on our revenue? Meaning, can we reduce our expenses and keep the same revenue? If we can decrease those expenses and keep the same revenue, we're in a good shape, right? If we can increase those expenses and have a significant impact on our revenue in that process, then that's going to be worthwhile. So if you knew that if I spend an extra $1,000 on labor, that I'm going to produce an extra $10,000 in revenue, that's probably an easy call, right? Like, okay, well, that, that makes sense. If I do that, that's going to increase this. That's fantastic. Well, if I said $1,000 in labor produces $1,000 in revenue, well, that's just, that's a break even. Like if you increased your revenue by a thousand bucks, but it costs you a thousand dollars to get there, that's not a great return. That's the same. It's just more work, same money. You don't want to do that. So we want to decrease the expenses that do not affect the revenue. We want to increase the effectiveness of the expenses that we have. And that in turn is going to increase our revenue piece while keeping our profitability on an upward track. So we have people that come in and they say, hey, I, you know, I know what my problem is. I just need to create more sales. I just need to create more revenue coming in. And so I use this example. Somebody will say, hey, this is all I need to do. This is going to fix some of my problems. Okay, cool. Let's talk about it. So right now you're producing a million dollars in revenue but you have a $50,000 loss. So your business is losing $50,000 every year, but you're producing a million dollars in revenue. So you feel like your answer is to increase business, increase revenue, increase sales. So let's say you had a 2X increase on your sales. You went from a million dollars to $2 million. You didn't change anything else. All your ratios stayed the same. Your $50,000 loss just became a $100,000 loss and you're working twice, twice as hard. That's not a win. Like to me, that's not a win at all. Like I am profit over revenue all day long. I would much rather have an increase in my profitability and have the same revenue. So, and I think everybody would agree. If you have a million dollar revenue business, that's losing $50,000. What if you swung that around to a $50,000 gain? Would that be a better scenario? So same revenue, but instead of losing 50,000, now we're making 50,000. Right. So we've reduced those expenses to the point where now we have a profit. We've we pulled one hundred thousand dollars out of our expenses to get to a profitability. We've made a hundred thousand dollar swing and now we've gone from losing money to gaining money. But we only had a 10 percent technical technically increase because we went from, you know, a million dollars in revenue to a hundred thousand dollars swing in the profitability, which is 10 percent of a million to have a profit. So if we can focus on those factors, that's how we're going to get there. And once we have the profitability where we want it, then we can start increasing that revenue. So if you had the same swing, you did that first, you went from a $50,000 loss to a $50,000 gain. Then if we go from $1 million in sales to $2 million in sales, 
you went from 50,000 in profit to $100,000 in profit, right? Our ratios are the same. I can tell you this, as you go from a million dollars in profit to a million dollars in revenue to a mil $2 million in revenue, you need to be looking at the efficiencies that are going to exist there. And so if you can find additional areas of improvement, then you can continue to increase that profitability. That profitability range, that ratio is going to go up in your business. So we want to look at the, the cost of sales. We want to look at our cost of, of goods sold. Oh, yeah, whatever you whatever your business is, those direct costs, some of that sometimes that's labor, sometimes that's the widget that you're selling, uh, sometimes it's the services, sometimes it's referral fees, whatever your business is, you got to look at what the cost of that is. We need to make sure that we're making that the most effective use that we can, reducing it where we can reduce it without affecting the revenue. We need to look at our payroll to make sure that we're not payroll heavy. That's generally a fixed expense when you're talking about indirect. So whatever your payroll is, we need to make sure that we're creating the revenue that results with that. And so that can come down to looking at the individual people that are in your organization and making sure that you are tracking what their output is. And so I get a lot of kickback on this. They say, well, that, that person doesn't do anything that creates revenue. So I can't track that. And that's just not true. So if, if they are doing a job that doesn't necessarily result in a direct revenue, then we just need to find the way that it indirectly affects revenue. So if you can find that, then you can put a value on that player that's within your, your, your industry or within your team. Right. And once you do that, then you know where they're at. That also gives you the ability to reward them for their output, which is going to make them more effective. So if we can do that with our people. Then we can start to move some of all the other expenses that exist within the business and find the efficiencies there that are going to help us to increase the, the revenue while keeping the cost the same. Or if we have to increase the cost, that our increase in revenue is significantly higher to the point where we're increasing that profitability. So profitability is the measuring stick that I wish everyone would use and everything else is affected by that. But, but profit is really the scoreboard. Like that's the, that's the winning number. Like nobody really cares how many interceptions happen or, you know, how many downs are or whatever. They just care at the end of the football game, what's the score, who won and profit should be that number. If you're bragging about revenue and making losing money every year, eh, you might want to hold off on that brag. If you're making good revenue and you're making great profitability, people are going to know it because you're making great money and you're not having to brag on something that's costing you money to brag. You're bragging on that profitability that you're bringing to the table. Your team's happy. You know, your, your business is doing well. Like that's the big win to me. That's the big uh, the big brag is the profitability of a business, because if you're profitable and you have a good range, every time you increase that revenue, that profit's going right up along with it. Your team's getting happier. You're getting happier. You're building something that you can exit at a later point or hire the people in to run that to give you the life that you want to have uh, You know, later on in life, in retirement, or if you're young, build it early, retire early. You know, or, or pursue other things that you want to do. You know, this is going to give you that freedom to do that if you can create a profitable business. And I, again, revenue is a big piece of that. Cash flow is a huge piece of that. But profitability is your real scoreboard. That's where your brags come from. Okay. No, that's excellent. Um, you know, you've hit on so many key things once again. So, uh, but, but I love that. Um, but, you know, one of the reasons we have this show is, you know, you're talking about a whole bunch of things that most business owners don't know about. And it's important to continually learn. I'm sure you're learning all the time. I'm continuing to learn as well. And as a business owner, it's it's key to continue to learn. And these are some of the things that that you need to understand. You know, you know, we have the show called Leadership Live because I'm talking small business because your business is going to survive and thrive based on how well you lead it. And you become a better leader through having knowledge and the more knowledge and understanding you have of your business, of business in general. And, you know, all these things Byron's talking about, you don't have to know them all, but you, you need to be working with someone or have someone on your team who can look at these things and can understand these. Um, but, at the end of the day, it's your business. So you can't not understand this stuff um, if you want to grow, if you want to be successful. So 
Um, you know, one of the key things is, you know, by, you can you can come in and say you need to do these things, these things, these things. But if you're not, if you don't have the leadership skills and ability, then that's not going to happen most likely. So, you know, it, it's it's important to understand, yeah, you have the numbers to figure out what the solution is, but you still have to, you know, the solution's not going to do itself. And, um, you know, you mentioned people come to you with a problem. I would say 95% of the time, the problem they think they have isn't really the problem that they have. <laughs> yeah. I agree. You know, uh, it may be a symptom or a, a minor problem, but usually it's not the real problem. Um, and, and that's why you got to get an external perspective. Um, it's important to do that. Um, and, you know, your leadership is also, you know, efficiency and productivity. You know, a lot of those gains, it's because you, you know, you're becoming more efficient. You know, if you're leading your team and they're performing better, uh, you know, all those are key things. You know, Byron can come in and help you identify those spots, but, you know, he's not going to be able to do that for you. You, you know, you have to lead your, your own business. So, um, you know, just a lot of, a lot of valuable stuff. So I appreciate you sharing that. Um, yeah, of course. I yeah. love what you said though. The, the knowledge is everything. And like, so you, you, you kid on a, on a great point with that. Like you have to constantly be improving your knowledge. And so sometimes that means like recognizing you, you only know what you know and you don't know what you don't know. And so, like you said, bringing in the people that can help you, that's everything. You know, that's true leadership. Leadership isn't doing everything yourself. It's knowing your limitations and then leading others to do those things that you're limited in. So, yeah, no, I love that. That's a great point, Andrew. Okay. No, appreciate it. So, yeah, no, this definitely um, is key. Um, you know, a lot of these relationships are a little bit complicated and you can't really see them without looking at the numbers and you know a lot of times i'll come into businesses and you know the first thing you have to do is have accurate timely numbers um so you know is that something you find and and how do you help people get on the right track having the information they need to make good decisions yeah. So you, you would be surprised. So we come in, we look at those numbers, we try to find, uh, you know, some inaccuracies. We, you know, we can generally find some things that maybe don't necessarily look right. Right. And so we can, we can help to focus in those areas and, and find the missing pieces that exist there. That's a big part of this. And what I have found is most of the time, most business owners are pretty decent with a profit and loss. So an income statement, they can generally do that. They know this many dollars came in, this many dollars went out. This is what you know we've, we've got at the end of the day. So that, that piece is generally pretty decently accurate. The piece that we find is missing a lot is the balance sheet. And so balance sheet is where your assets your liabilities and your equity exist. So assets are things that you own, liabilities are things that you owe, and then equity is the equity that you've created within that business. So that can be the money that you've put in, that can be the earnings that you've retained within the business, uh, that can be some of the distributions that you have an owner have taken out. So these are the, the, the business value exists in that equity piece. So if you have a good income statement or, or a good profit and loss, P&L, but your balance sheet is all kinds of wonky, then you don't really have an accurate picture. You need to know what you have. You need to know who owes you. You need to know what you owe. You need to know how much equity you've built into that business. And so that's the piece that a lot of times we come in and we say, hey, your balance sheet's a hot mess. So there's going to be things 
probably on the PL that should be on the balance sheet. There's things that are on the balance sheet that should probably be on the PL. And generally what we found is when people have the major cash flow issues, it's because their balance sheet is completely inaccurate. And so if you know where your balance sheet is and you know where your PL is, you're going to have the accurate information to make good decisions. If I give you wildly inaccurate information and tell you to make a decision, what do you think the chances are of making a good, sensible decision are? Pretty low, right? So if you have good information, then you have a much higher chance of getting a good result, making a good decision. But bad information, you know, you've heard the term garbage in, garbage out, but bad information in is going to result in probably a bad decision because you don't have accurate information. You're just gambling at that point. You know, like, well, I just hope this works out. That's not a good way to run a business. Like you definitely want to make good decisions. So when we come in, we look at those books. We try to make sure that they're as accurate as possible. And then we're going to give the guidelines that need to happen to make this move forward. And so a lot of people say, do you just take over everything? I mean, yes, kind of in the beginning we do because we want to make sure it's accurate, but we don't want to be involved in it for life. So generally we come in, we fix it, we get an accurate picture, and then we want to help you or help the person that you have in charge of that to take that over so that you are, uh, you are owning that as a business. As a business owner, we want you to own it. If you have no interest in doing any of this, 100% hire somebody else to do it, right? But if you, if you like it or you understand it enough and you realize the importance of it, then like take ownership in that, you know, but, but have the guide that's going to help you to understand that. And that's where a fractional CFO really can step in and help you to make those high level decisions. Getting the books right, that's a bookkeeping, accounting type spot. It's very difficult, but it's very different from what a CFO is going to do but it's still wildly important. So don't like downgrade a, a bookkeeper or downgrade an accountant or whatever. Like they have a huge impact on your business. They're just as important as anything else. So making sure that that stuff's accurate, making sure that you have good numbers are going to allow you to make the forecasts that you need to start setting those targets. The budgets are how you're going to get there. The forecasts are where you want to be. So if you have the forecast, you say, hey, in five years, I want to be a $100 million business, right? So based off of that, we can use that as a vision board. So if I want to be at $100 million, I need to grow at this level to get to that in five years, 10 years, whatever it is. So once you set that, then we can set the parameters to get there from where you are today. So if that's where you want to be, then we need to set those parameters. So if you want to be there in five years, then at year four, you need to be here. Year three, you need to be here. Year two, you need to be here. Year one, you need to be here. And so we're going to set those. We're going to set those things in place so that you can get to that point. And we're going to look at the metrics that get you there. Most people have heard about KPIs, key performance indicators. Key performance indicators generally are going to tell you what has the direct effect on the major plays in your business. So a KPI may be cost of labor. If, if you have figured out that your cost of labor has a direct correlation to the revenue piece or a direct correlation to the profitability piece, then you know the lever to move to make a revenue jump or a profit jump. And you know, if I do this, then it's going to come down. If I do this, it's going to go up. And what's our relation to that? So you need to have those in place so that you know the decisions that you're making are good decisions. If your decision is made in the hopes that everything works out, that's not a great decision. But if you know, if I make this decision, I have a 99% chance of this being the result, that's a great risk. Like that's a great bet to take. I mean, you're not going to get that in Vegas, right? So, I mean, your best case is 49% chance of success in Vegas. You know, that that's horrible. So if I can use the data that I have to make informed, smart decisions and increase the chance of success, then that's what I want to do. Like that's the best decision. So having good books, having good financial data, having good insight into where your business is, where your business needs to go, and the financial map to get there, that is everything. That's where the budgets come into place. That's where your key performance indicators come into place. These are the things, and it's been called rocks. EOS calls it rocks. So there's a lot of different ways to say, these are the things that I need to do to find success within my business. And you need to know those things. Those things need to exist on there. And if you don't get those, you don't understand those, you don't like those, whatever that situation is, hire the person that does. Nobody says you have to do every single job within your business. Nobody says you have to be the expert at every piece of your business. 
there is tons of people out there that run businesses that they're probably not good at most of the pieces. They may be exceptional at leadership. And if they're exceptional at leadership, they're exceptional at finding the people that can do the things to make that business successful. And they're amazing at leading people to make those things happen and leading that business through the forecast to that big profitability, to that big valuation. They're leading people there. They may, may be absolutely horrible at every other aspect. They may not be able to add without taking a shoe off if it gets above 10. But if they can lead that company there, they're going to hire the people that they need to that understand those things to give them the metrics to get there. And then they're leading the team to that. So that's that's a big piece. I know this is called Leadership Live. Uh, and so that wasn't a, a dig on the leadership. But that's why leadership is so important, because you are leading your organization. If you're in charge, you're leading. You need to lead well. OK, no, I mean, definitely. I, I agree 100 uh, yeah. percent. Um, and, you know, definitely get help. But, you know, it's it's you're still accountable for everything in your business. So you can't get help and be like, OK, I don't need to know that. <laughs> you yeah. just don't need to do that. <laughs> you still need to know about it. So yeah. um, so it's always, always important to, to do that. Um, you know, we got several things um, that we're going to cover, but we're going to take a quick break. I just want to introduce something to you that you know we've launched and we started launching is our um, Small Business Pro Network. Um, it's an online community for entrepreneurs to go to learn, collaborate, and grow. Um, it's available at www.sbpronetwork.com. Um, at this point, there's no cost to participate um, at the basic level, and you know that's only during the launch period. But also, you know, if you join during the launch period, then you're never going to have a cost for the basic level. So, I encourage you to do that, um, and you know, check it out. Uh, I'll put the link up there and, um, you know, look forward to see, seeing you there. We share a lot of valuable stuff, connections, um, schedule of events and activities, not just for what we're doing, but for what other people are doing as well for, for entrepreneurs. So we're trying, we're working to create the ultimate um, ecosystem for small business owners. So um, definitely invite you to be a part of it. I'll put the info on the screen as well on a banner and um then i'm gonna come back and um talk a little bit more to byron so um byron a couple things you know where time goes really fast so there's like three things i want to talk to you about so uh i'm gonna ask you all of them at once so we could at least get two of them off fair yeah, enough I mean, <laughs> yeah, let's do it let's do it all right so um you know, you talked about um, growing and, you know, doubling revenues. Um, but, you know, I think also one thing to bring out is, you know, you, you should be scaling and scalable in that, you know, every additional dollar you, you sell should be more profitable than the last. Um, so, you know, as you're growing, your profitability should be going. So, you know, even if you double your profits or your, your revenues, you might should triple or quadruple your profits at the same time. Um, so definitely that I want to have you touch on, um, you know, early on, you mentioned one of the biggest problems is people are too broad. They're not focused enough. And as a result, they're not as successful as they would have been. And then finally, you talked about exiting your business, which was great. But then you you talked about, well, after the fact, when I thought about it, it could have been greater. And I think that happens to a lot of people is, you know, most people who exit their businesses, you know, it's hard enough just to exit. But even after that, they're sort of still not happy, whether well, for whatever reason. So I don't know if you can tackle those three or whatever you want in like five to 10 minutes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speed round. Let's go. I love it. Um, 
Well, first, I do want to answer those three, but I do want to bring something up. Like you just talked about it. Guys, if, if you don't have a network, get a network. You can't do this alone. So like, you know, if, if you don't have a network, get in this www.sbpronetwork.com. Find people that you can get involved with. Find a mentor. Find people that are doing something similar to you, something that has absolutely nothing to do with you, but they're also in business. Like find the people that just you need to surround yourself with so that you can find success. You can't do this alone. So if you are not a piece of a, of a, of a network, get on this. If you're already a piece of a network, get on this. If you have too many networks, then like eliminate one and get on this thing with Andrew. Like I'm telling you, network is where it's at. So let me get into, let me get into three, but I, that that's so important. And I'm really glad you brought that up, Andrew. I want to touch base on that. Uh, Cause that's, that's everything you have to be in networks. Uh, so uh, I, I'm going to go backwards. So the exit plan, you know, exit plan is really a five-year plan. And that's why I use the five-year forecast when I was talking about it. If you're thinking about exiting, then you're five years away from it. If you're not thinking about exiting, I don't think you can tell me that a year, two, three, four, five years from now, you may not be thinking about exiting. So like, let's start planning today. And if you are planning for an exit, you are planning for your business to be at peak efficiency and operations, which if you never leave your business, if you never exit your business, that's a great place to be. If you exit without exiting, meaning you hire in the people to run your company for you, but you continue to have ownership, being at peak efficiency and operations is exactly where you need to be. If you plan to sell this business in five years, Peak efficiency in operations is going to give you the best multiplier, which means you need to start now. So if you do not have an exit plan in place, get it. Get it now. That's I promise you it is, that's everything. Build your exit plan. I know people that build them the minute they think about a business, they start the process of building their exit plan as they're building their operating uh, agreement or building their partnership agreement. It's in place right there. I, I have a business right now that I am a partner in. And we, that was one of our first conversations was we will never take a dime out of this. We are building this thing strictly to sell it. It is a pure exit plan business. That is the whole point of this business. So that I'm going to work backwards. So I think that's huge. Um, and so we talked about the, uh, the the profitability in the business. And I love what Andrew said, like as you increase that revenue, uh, you're going to become more profitable or that percentage should go up. And that is accurate, but you need to make sure that your profitability is always at the forefront of what you're doing. If your profit is at max profit for the revenue that you're at and for the resources that you have, as you increase that revenue, you're gonna find more efficiencies which are going to allow that profitability to go up. So I love that Andrew brought that up. So as you grow, you should be increasing revenue, but you should be increasing profitability as well. And here's the stick upon which you need to measure that. And I think this will help you to remember this. Nobody wants to do more work for less money. No employee does. No owner does. Nobody wants to do that, right? And so if you're increasing revenue and keeping profit the same, that's not a good thing. Your profitability percentage is going down. You don't want to do that. So don't do more work for less money. That doesn't make any sense. So I love what Andrew said. Like as you increase, you're going to find those efficiencies. You're going to become more profitable. I think that that is everything that's crazy important. We need to do that. Uh, and then when we're talking about being too broad, focus on the big impact pieces in your business. So if, if there's a bunch of problems Deal with the major one first, get that in place, find the solution to that problem, and then work your way down to the small ones. You can't fix everything at once. So fix the big problem and then move to the next problem and then move to the next problem, move to the next problem. You're not going to be able to fix everything at once. You can't do one thing that fixes everything. You're going to have to fix these things, you know, a little bit at a time. And so find the big problem, fix that, the BAP the big ass problem, find that one, fix that one first, and then move on to the next. And so you should have a scoreboard that you're looking at that points out where you want to be. If you have the five-year forecast, you have your plan in place, then you know the metrics to get there. And if you're wildly off from a metric, that should be a big red stoplight for you. We actually do this with our customers. We have a scoreboard that has three colors on it. It's got revenue, pieces of revenue, profit, pieces of the profit, cash flow, pieces of the cash flow. Each one of those is a box. 
that is green, yellow, or red. If it's red, it's way outside of the metric. We got to get that taken care of ASAP. We go directly to an action plan. So you need to find out what the issue is, where you need to be, what you need to do to get there, who's responsible for making it happen, and the due date upon which they're going to have it fixed. That's your action plan. Take care of the reds, then deal with the yellows. And then if you get rid of all of those and your scoreboard is bright green, now we're just focused on building that revenue and building that company and increasing that profitability. That's the best way to handle it. So that was speed round. Hopefully I got all of it, Ranger. No, that was that was outstanding. You still got two minutes left. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So uh, no, that that was great, and um, you know, and I like how you ended it um, with your scorecard. Um, you're right in that before you start growing your revenues, you do need to take put all those things into place. Um, but once you do that you're going to you're going to grow and you're going to be so much more profitable so much faster because then your business is running optimally uh, a lot of businesses go out of business when they grow because they're not run optimally so as a result you know they can't keep up you know one of the wheels falls off somewhere they're not watching their cash flow because when you grow it takes cash instead of giving you cash um so many dynamics but if you take the time to set your business up optimally then you can go a lot of ways so no th this has been a pleasure um thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to to join me this evening and, and just share your wisdom um with with the audience um you know i think you know a lot of people are in business coming into business um you know i think that most people are woefully unprepared for the task ahead of them. <laughs> so, and you know, we, we, we came into it and learned a lot over time. So um, whatever we can do to kind of help prepare people um, is, is valuable because that, that could be life changing. So, uh, so yeah, thank you so much. We've got your li linked up LinkedIn. I've been sharing and also your website. So definitely feel free to reach out to Byron. Um, you know, he's doing some great stuff. And, um, you know, I appreciate you joining me. We'll have to have you back on. Um, oh, so yeah, love it. Yeah, love it. So, because uh, yeah. there's never enough time. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but, but no, this, this is great. Hang on for a minute, Brian, Byron, as I finish up, and um, we'll chat for a minute. Yeah, so, yeah, I love it. Okay, so great. Now, this is another great episode of Leadership Live at 805 Talking Small Business. Thank you for joining in. Appreciate everybody's comments. You know, if you're tuning in later, um, definitely check us out. Um, so, you know, a lot of valuable things that, that we chatted about. Um, as well, I mentioned the community. So, um, definitely as we're launching it, we got some special pricing, you know, some free stuff opportunities so you know don't miss the boat on that you got the info there and um you know next week you know each week we have a special guest and next week we're going to have a little bit of a different topic um next week we've got Deidre Helberg and she's going to talk about becoming a leader of leaders so um you know as your business grows you know you have to grow your team and one of the challenges is you have to evolve as, as a leader and your role and your responsibilities are gonna be different. So you go from being a manager to being a leader of managers and that takes different skills. Um, so we're gonna talk about, you know, how do you become a leader within your organization? But not only that, you know, she leads other organizations with other business owners and leaders. And, um, you know, that's the ultimate level of leadership. So I'm um, looking forward to chatting with Deidre next week. And, um, you know, once again, I'm sure it will be an excellent um, show. So definitely um, hope you can join us again next week, either live or as a follow-up to the recording. So, but at the end of the day, the more that you know, the faster and more successfully your business will grow. 
Thank you for listening to Leadership Live at 805, Talking Small Business. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Leadership Live is one of the many valuable resources provided through the Small Business Pro University, empowering business owners to learn, profit, and grow. Find out more at sbprou.com.